golly! My boy, my, my, my boy, my, my, my boy. Wonder what's for dinner. My boy, my boy, my boy. Oh boy! My boy. Oh boy! My boy. Oh boy! Good. Wonder what's for dinner. Oh boy! My boy. Good. Oh boy! My boy. Wonder what's for dinner. I won! My goodness, this is awful! Good. Now you must die. Oh boy! Good. You will die. My boy. Good. Die. Boy. Boy. This is awful. This is illegal, you know. I apologize. The Zelda games for the Philips CDI. Everyone has heard of these at least once in their life. Some might even say that licensing Zelda and even Mario games to Philips was Nintendo's biggest mistake ever. All those people have obviously never played Sticker Star. I've always secretly wanted to play these just for the sake of experiencing them at least once in my life, so I tried looking for a way to play them without having to pay <coughs> these prices. Well, what if I told you that there's an easy and also definitive way to play two of the three Zelda CDI games? As it turns out, some dedicated fans have remade Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda Want of Gamelon in the form of remasters with lots of fixes to make the games play better. These remastered versions of the duology are what I will be looking at today. This is illegal, you know. No, it's a grey area, you know. Ah, I'm so excited to finally play these legendary games for the very first time. I have my controller plugged in and ready to go. Oh, before I boot up the first game, quick shout out to the startup icons. Very classy. Oh, goosebumps. Oh yeah, Link the Faces of Evil. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. Oh man, this intro is so cheesy. I love it. It is written, only Link can defeat Ganon. Great, I'll grab my stuff. There is no time. Your sword is enough. Let the boy grab his stuff for five minutes. It will make beating Ganon and saving Korra die a million times easier. What's wrong with you? Alright, we're in the game now. Let's go to... Uh... I don't know. Granu! Let's see what we can do here. Lamp oil. Rope. Bombs. You want it? It's yours, my friend. As long as you have enough rubies. What, were you expecting a Morshu joke? There's a million Morshu jokes on the internet! How am I supposed to come up with something new and original? B -b 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 bombs So I hear you all wondering, what exactly does this remaster do to make this a better experience than the original version? Well... First of all, you can play in widescreen if you want, so there's now more Philips CDI goodness filling up your screen, so you can see what's coming ahead even better. Oh yeah, this remaster is getting spicy already! Okay, so I've also heard that the game now runs at 60 frames per second instead of 15 frames per second. Okay, now that's an impressive difference. I admit, the game feels very smooth to control. But I kinda wish that there was an option to play in 50 frames per second when turning off remaster mode, so I could at least get a feel of how awful the original version felt to control. The loading times are also faster in this remaster, but that should go without saying. Next up are the... Rubies. No, Rupees! The Rupee colors have also been fixed. So originally, a red Rupee was worth only 1 instead of 20 like in A Link to the Past, a green Rupee 5 instead of 1, and a blue Rupee 20 instead of 5. As long as you have remaster mode turned on, the 3 Rupee colors of this game are now worth the same as in A Link to the Past, as well as every single Zelda game that came out after the CDI games. Oh, and you also no longer have to stab rupees with your sword to collect them. You can just walk into them. The extra life system is also gone as long as remaster mode is turned on. So, one of the most frustrating things about the original versions of these games was how if you die 3 times in an area, you'd get kicked out. Now you have an endless amount of continues after each checkpoint. Thank Halia! If this was the only addition to remaster mode, I would have been perfectly fine with it. This was the most necessary change that these games needed to make them playable in my opinion. Occasionally in remaster mode, there may also be an arrow that will tell you that an entrance that may not look like an entrance to you at first sight, well, is an entrance. Yeah, I would have never guessed some of these on my own. 
The controls have also been improved. Jumping is no longer done by pressing up on the D-pad, thankfully. I'm playing with a DualShock 4 and jumping is now X, attacking is square, using items is circle and opening up your inventory is triangle. Perfect. I did find myself accidentally doing the duck walk all the time when I wasn't even holding down though, which was really weird and kinda annoying. What's up with that? Why is it still so sensitive? Fun fact, in original mode I couldn't figure out how to open the inventory screen. What the hell? You can also turn on subtitles for the cutscenes now. And you can tell that whoever wrote these had a lot of fun with lines like... Carpet whooshing. Flash disintegrating and burning up. Chiptune sounds of moving off screen. Chiptune sounds of moving on screen. And flexing. The last major difference I want to talk about for now is the fact that the funny meme wordy tutorials are gone in both games. You know, the one where Link goes... When I'm crouching, you can make me do the duck walk! Cool, huh? Kind of a weird decision to cut these, but I guess it doesn't change much in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, both games no longer feel frustrating. They feel fun and fair now. Anyway, I finally got the money to buy some bombs, so let's blow up this boulder and press onwards. Well, it's pitch black in here. Help! Let's come back later. I don't know what this with the faces of evil, but in this game it took me forever to find the lantern. So in like 90% of the pitch black areas, I just had to stumble my way through the dark with no lantern. The area I just left is one of the only exceptions. Help! Ganon froze the fountain! I'm stuck! Uh, I'm sure the cold never bothered her anyway. Let's collect some snowballs to defeat these fire enemies, so they will then give me... Uh, flames to defeat ice enemies will then give me snowballs again. I've seen people complain about the snowball mechanic in the past, but I kind of found it very satisfying. It's more fun than people give it credit for, and it never felt super grindy either. Hey Zelda, wake up! What? Link? You've saved me! Well, F you too then. Time for round two. You can't kill me! No! 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 This boss was pathetic. Actually, most bosses are just pathetic in general across both games and usually die very quickly. And if they don't die quickly, the fight usually goes like this instead. <laughs> What's up with the inventory screen? For some strange reason you can only move the cursor one single time after you open up the inventory. Forcing me to constantly open the inventory, move my cursor once, then exit the inventory, then open it up again, then move the cursor one time again, then exit it again, and then rinse and repeat until I finally get to the item I want to use. Who the hell decided it should work like that? And why was it not fixed in this remaster? That's such a weird oversight that sticks out like a sore thumb. Seriously, this can get really annoying when trying to figure out which item I need to defeat a specific boss. Especially when you have most, if not all, of the items in the game already, and your inventory is huge. Okay, let's bomb this rock and... Huh? It's so weird how most rocks in these games require a crap ton of bombs in order to destroy them, and the game doesn't even tell you how many you need. Well, at least once you get the power glove, you can destroy these rocks instantly for the low, low price of only 5 rupees. Rubies. Oh sorry, rubies. Hey wait a minute, I'm the one who was right! Oh look at that lady's sweet moves! You know, you can tell that Link was sometimes drawn by a different artist in some scenes, especially in this one. This other artist drew him more like a Zelda 1 and 2 incarnation, even though this Link is supposed to be the same one as the Link to the Past and Link's Awakening incarnation. Probably a miscommunication over on the team at Philips. <laughs> Amateurs. Finally, I got the lantern. Time to go back to the very first area in the game now. I may be hideous, but after a year of being frozen, you will beg to join me. <laughs> I already killed you. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what the next area is like. 
See how Harlequin captures Corridians? You lose. I never expected to hear that in a Zelda game ever. Oh yeah, carnival music! Come on, come on, win fabulous prizes! Oh wow, Link! I didn't know you could climb the air. <sighs> Gotta kill these wall masters first before I get to the boss. Golly! Golly! Whoa! And people say the observatory for Majora's Mask is magical, but this, this is something different. This is, this is heavenly. Through the eye of Glutko lies the shrine of Korridai. Oh, me. I'm simply famished. No! <laughs> It tastes like a gyra! Perhaps just one more? Oh no! It's a Hinox! What could we possibly do? Uh oh! Uh oh! Okay, I don't really know what to do anymore, but apparently I can go to Ganon's Lair, so let's do that, I guess? Uh, apparently I keep getting hit by nothing, though. Uh, I can manage. Alright, let's do this, Ganon. Time to defeat you. Just wait a sec, Ganon. I just gotta grab my lantern real quickly. Uh, there we go. Just a little longer now, Ganon. Let me now grab my book to trap you in. There we go. No, not into the pit. It burns. Wait, what's Zelda doing here? Since when did she get kidnapped? I just saved you from Ganon! You did not. Well done, Link! Ganon is once again imprisoned. Come. Look, already Koridai is returning to harmony. The birds are singing. God, this ending is so cheesy. Just like the intro. It's almost like a kid wrote this. Link are the hero of Koridai! I guess that's worth a kiss, huh? Huh! I won! Are you sure about that? So as it turns out, I finished the game too early and missed out on several things like... The mirror, um, I mean the reflect shield, a heart container, a sword upgrade, this guy's house that lets me see Ganon's Sangrumis? Oh, so that's what was hitting me. I also missed out on the power glove, and last but not least, I missed out on the cutscene that tells me Zelda got kidnapped in the first place. Oh well, that explains everything then. But don't worry, I went back and got all of these real quickly. No sweat. My hero! Won't oh, you please jump across that little old chasm and cut yeah. my daddy's chains? Pretty please, have a heart. Oh, she literally meant it when she said have a heart. I just got a new heart container. Ah, there's her dad, dancing to this amazing soundtrack. Actually, I noticed something very weird. I never had to use the duck walk or the winged helmet even once. Why do these abilities even exist? I thought I needed the helmet right here in Ganon's lair, but it turns out I just needed to ride the heart to see Lava Rock. Alright, time to beat Ganon again, yada yada yada, credits time! This is such a weird credits song for a Zelda game, but I guess it fits this game really well. 50,000 dollars and 5 years of jail if you illegally distribute this game? Oh no, who would do such a thing? Seriously, why did you keep that in the remaster? How edgy. I won! Wait, this remaster has a hero mode? No thanks, I'm good for now. Alright, next game. Zelda, Want of Gamelon. Okay, if you thought the intro cutscene for Faces of Evil was cheesy and felt like it was written by a child, then wait until you see this one. Zelda, Duke Onklet is under attack by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to Gamelon to aid him. But father, what if something happens to you? 
I'll take the Triforce of Courage to protect me. If you don't hear from me in a month, send Link. Impa? Don't worry, Zelda. The Triforce of Wisdom promises the King will safely return. Enough. My ship sails in the morning. I wonder what's for dinner. Oh boy! I'm so hungry, I could eat an Octorok! <sighs> a whole month gone, and still no word. I'm certain he's alright. Yeah, that old Ganon's no match for the king. Link, go to Gamelon and find my father. Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Wake up, Impa. We're going to Gamelon. All right, dear. I'll get the Triforce of Wisdom. What's up with the one month later and later still transitions? It looks so cheap. And was it really necessary to wake up Impa in the middle of the night, Zelda? Let the woman sleep! Splish! So we start the game and immediately we are greeted by a bunch of doors that say LOCKED! JUST KILL ME ALREADY! Thank Halia, found the lantern almost immediately this time before I could even encounter any dark areas. Phew! Oh wait, I don't have any lantern oil yet. For the dead shall rise, and the living shall be their slaves. She must be stopped! For the dead shall rise. <laughs> Alright, let's give this lady what she wanted. This will make a great omelette! Here! Thanks! Thanks! Everyone ran when the Gleok came, but monsters know better than bothering me. Here's a shroud that scares the raps off Gibdo. The shroud! No! It's gone! Let's talk to this guy. He looks very jolly. Hmm, aren't you a might puny to go up against Ganon? Oh god, why does this guy's face look so creepy? Why is this the only NPC Zelda decides to touch? I'll do alright. Oh look, Zelda can climb on air too, just like Link. Are the two of them like mimes or something? <laughs> Oh, is it just me or does Vault of Gamelon feel very rushed compared to Faces of Evil? The enemy placements feel very cluttered and random in this game. I can see why this game was so frustrating in the original version. And the developers over at Philips must have known this because a lot of items in this game are just optional items that make it easier to deal with enemies. And certain items that had cutscenes in the Faces of Evil have no cutscenes in this game at all. They're just lying there now sometimes. Okay, let's go to Hanyu, Hanju, <laughs> Hanyu Forest now. Holy crap, this music slaps! Actually, now that I think about it, I should really mention the music for both of these games. It sounds nothing like a Zelda soundtrack, but you know what? I like it. No, I actually think I love it. Seriously, I actually think I'm in love with these soundtracks now. I'm that serious here. I couldn't stop listening to this music after beating both games for this video. I think it's because these soundtracks remind me a lot of the PS1 soundtracks I grew up with. Some songs remind me of Super Nintendo games as well. And everyone knows that Super Nintendo games have fantastic soundtracks. Some songs remind me of Crash Bandicoot. There are specific songs that remind me of Spyro, Donald the Croc Attack, Wonder 2 Dalmatians, Croc, Castlevania, and even Donkey Kong Country 2. I guess it's because similar sound chips were used by the composers of all these soundtracks during this era, I guess. Pretty impressive, considering the CDI games came out before all of these games I just listed. Oh, and there's one song that sounds almost exactly like the Splatoon theme song. Take a listen. And then there is another song that reminded me a lot of Cadence of Hyrule, which almost makes me wonder if that game was secretly referencing Want of Gamelon right under Nintendo's noses. Nah, probably not. 
With that said though, the world map music from World of Gamelon is my favorite song in this duology. And believe it or not, but it is also now one of my favorite Zelda songs of all time. No, I'm not kidding. It is right up there with the likes of the Dark World, Dead Mountain, Belt of the Goddess, Dragon Roost Island, the Twilight Princess main team, etc. I just love this song that much. Usually when I think about my favorite Zelda songs, the Dark World comes to mind first. But I'm pretty sure that world map from Want of Camelon is going to come up first now instead. This is so weird, especially considering Nintendo refuses to acknowledge these games. I would kill for some of these songs in Smash. One last thing about music though, because I've gotta praise the dynamic music real quickly too. I didn't even know that dynamic music in video games even existed back in 1993. Is this one of the first games to do so? Or am I going crazy right now? We have thrones and the fountain of life! Oh, that was good! We have made evil! Let's bring the darkness down! Oh, now we're just killing regular old ladies, huh? Oh, listen, it's the Spyro sounding music. Oh dear, Omfak is guarding the shrine. Whatever I see, I shall devour. <laughs> And just like that, the game turns into Donkey Kong. Is it just me, or is it getting hot in here? Hey, I think your dick is dirty. Try ending the game and cleaning your dick. Uh. Is it just me or is Wand of Gamelon obsessed with the color green? Green screen green no less. <laughs> Good! Then let us make a cape from your shroud. Here, I must be off. Say what you will about these games, but at least killing the wrist rope works exactly the same as in Zelda 2. You just stand there and reflect this attack just like in that game. Link told me about you. You know Link? Sure, he gave me his canteen for a kiss. You kissed him? Here, it's empty anyway. Whoa, what's up with the close-ups? Oh, now you're acting jealous, Zelda? Link is a free man. If he stopped acting like a tsundere all the time, he wouldn't have kissed another woman. Okay, now to kill this dark nut. What should I do? I've tried out everything except for the power glove. He's dead. Let's get out of here. Wait, she just punched him? How badass! Hit that scene of Blade 3? This game did it first! You've killed me! Good. You Gonclid betrayed the king! I know. Strike the head of the portrait to enter Onclid's chamber. Thanks. Holy shit, it's November already! I know. Quick, get the Christmas lights! Thanks. It's really weird how there is a room in this area with zero use, and I guess that means the room leading up to it is useless too. Why is this here? Hello? Your friend Link could eat ten of these. <laughs> At least. Ha, the Arpagos will die for them. I got breath. What does it do? Whoops. Oh, I'll figure it out later. Let's see. That ought to do it. Ah! All right, I have every single item in the game, including the breath that I still haven't used. Let's go and see if we can beat Ganon. But first, let's try out the breath real quickly on my way there. Oh god, stay back! Stay back, I say! Hey, Ganon! Missed you me? dare bring light to my lair? You must die! <sighs> the chains! No! You haven't seen the last of me! Ah, 
Why are these Ganon fights so pathetic in both games? All you do is throw one item at him and he dies instantly. Surely they could have programmed an actual fight against him. This is such a lame way to beat a game. Hey, it's the... King? Uh... hi -ya! Father! Oh god, what a way to start an ending. Why does he walk like a robot? You've saved me! Here's the traitor, your majesty! Please, your omnipotence, have mercy! After you've scrubbed all the floors in Hyrule, then we can talk about mercy. Take him away! Yes, my liege. I wonder what happened to Link? Oh, he was a bore anyway. Stop looking at yourself. What happened? Why was Link stuck in that woman's mirror? What even is this ending? It gets more absurd by the second! <laughs> Nothing, Link. We were just about to have a feast. Great! <laughs> <laughs> I won! Wait, there's a reward for beating hero mode? Okay, I'll quickly do it in one game anyway. So yeah, I quickly played through Rounds of Gamelon again in hero mode, and it wasn't as bad as I thought, as long as you stick to remaster mode. It's a fair and fun challenge, like you'd expect from a Zelda game. It was never frustrating. Although I do admit, the falling objects can get you some cheap deaths occasionally. These will never not be a little bit annoying. Alright, I beat Ganon again on hero mode. What do I get? Good. I unlocked Link at King Harkonnen as playable characters? What? I mean, I understand Link, that should be a simple character swap with the faces of evil sprites and everything. But the king? Sorry, Zelda. Not enough rubies. Well, I guess even in the CDI world, Link can't escape being mistaken for Zelda by filthy casuals now. Link can do everything Zelda can, like throwing bread. Whoa! Okay, but now for the big highlight. Let's play as the king. Lord, forgive me for the sins I'm gonna commit. He looks so high quality compared to Link, Zelda and all of the NPCs. <laughs> I love it! He just punches his enemies. Nice! And there's laser beams coming out of his hands too. This guy's too powerful for words. Whoa, check out the drop kick. Welp, now the king can finally bomb some the dongos himself. As long as his back doesn't fill him into. <laughs> oh no! They gave him an ass! Okay, so apparently we get something if we beat the final boss again as the king, so let's do that! Oh, hello, miserable, older looking Harkonnen. Wait, is this a time travel story now where the young king saves his future self? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we now unlocked God Mode and Infinite Items Mode. Pretty self-explanatory, God Mode gives you infinite health and infinite items mode, well, you know. Except for the bread for some reason, what's up with that? Why no infinite bread? Will that break the economy too much? Make this guy lose his job? Well, those games sure were something. I have to admit, I had way more fun with these games than I expected. The fact that remaster mode removes the extra life system changes everything to make these games a decently enjoyable experience and the other additions are just nice bonuses. I think I can safely say that I like these games a lot now and I will definitely replay these two games every once in a while if I just want some quick fun. After all, it only took me about one hour to beat each game, so they're perfect to pick up and play. If I compare these two games to other bad games from other successful franchises such as Sticker Star, Crash of the Titans, Mind of a Mutant, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, etc. I've got to say, these games are better, even when playing the original more frustrating mode. And let me tell you guys a little secret, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this or some of you might think I'm joking. But believe me, I'm not. I enjoyed the Faces of Evil and Want of Gamelon Remastered more than the Oracle games, the multiplayer games, Tinkle's Rosy Rupee Land and even Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, which I all love by the way. Yeah, that's just how good these remasters are. It's just dumb fun that you can pick up and play in an hour or two 
And that's just nice. Makes for some good laughs too. I think I can safely add these two games to my pile of guilty pleasure games. You know, I really wish there was a CDI version of these canvases of Link, Zelda and Ganondorf. Although, instead of Ganondorf, King Harkonine may be cooler. My boy! Well, that was it. Two of the three Zelda CDI games fully remastered for the PC by dedicated fans. I had so much fun playing these, thank you! Well, have a happy, merry, holly, jolly Zelda month everyone, and hopefully see you guys next time. Bye!